War Scholar presents the story of the 47 Ronin. The story of the Ronin is fact. However, some of the events have been dramatized over the centuries by storytellers. In 1701 in Japan, two daimyo were given the duty of receiving officials of the emperor at the court of the shogun. A few words about the government structure of Japan at the time. The Battle of Sekigahara in 1600 was won by the Tokugawa shogunate and more or less brought peace to Japan. Japan was divided into about 200 territories called Han. Each Han was ruled by a daimyo and while some Han were large, most were small. Each daimyo had a small army of samurai, which he paid in food or land, since many could not afford to pay in money. In exchange, the samurai gave their master service and loyalty. The samurai served the daimyo, and the daimyo served the shogun. The emperor was ruler of all Japan, but was just a figurehead, given complete reverence, but holding very little power. The shogun ran Japan. Daimyo were required to perform Sankin Kotai, which meant that each daimyo had to spend every other year living away from his territory at the shogun court in Edo. When the daimyo was back in his Han, his wife and child were required to live in Edo. They were essentially held hostage to keep control over the daimyos. The daimyo would travel to Edo with his samurai, and over the years, the daimyo were required to build the roads between their Han and Edo. Inns and shops sprung up along the roads, and over time this travel helped grow Japanese economic activity, and strengthened the capital's connection and control of outlying territories. Now to the story of the 47 Ronin. In 1701, two daimyo, young Asano and Lord Kamei, were doing their Sankin Kotai duty in Edo. They and other daimyo were instructed by the shogun to receive a visit from officials of the emperor. They needed to learn how to properly do this. So the shogun's master of protocol, the powerful Kira, was assigned to teach them. Kira was a much older man and known for his arrogance and rudeness. Over time, Lord Kamei wanted to kill Kira for his rudeness. Kamei's counselors convinced Kamei to give his teacher Kira gifts or bribes. He did so, and Kira then treated Kamei properly. However, Kira continued to insult young Asano, referring to him as a country boy with no manners, for not providing gifts to him as others had done. Asano felt Kira should not get gifts for doing his duty. Eventually, Asano was insulted again, so drew a dagger and attacked Kira. He only cut Kira's face before being disarmed. Attacking anyone in the Shogun residence was punishable by death. Asano only regretted he had not killed Kira. He was sentenced to commit suicide, which he did stoically, and his lands were confiscated and his family name ruined. Asano's samurai were not sure what to do next, now that the lands they defended were confiscated. Of the 300 or so, most drifted off to find other work. The principal counselor among the samurai, Oishi, and 46 of the remaining samurai decided to plot to kill Kira. They dispersed also and found work as carpenters, merchants, and other professions. Kira had increased his guard and sent spies to watch on these samurai to see if they were planning to kill him. Oishi pretended to become a vagabond, getting drunk, brawling, frequenting brothels and taverns, and even divorcing his wife and taking a concubine. At one point, a samurai saw Oishi on the ground drunk and passed out. He spat on Oishi and kicked him in the face, but Oishi did nothing. Kira heard of this and relaxed his guard, thinking the threat to his life was gone. 
In the meantime, the 47 Ronin had been illegally smuggling weapons into Edo and stashing them. They made their own armor to use in the attack. Finally, on the night of December 14, 1702, in a driving snowstorm, the Ronin attacked Kira's castle. They told the nearby villagers that they would not hurt the locals, that they were there only to take revenge on Kira. Kira had been a rude neighbor, so the locals did not intervene. The Ronin split into two forces, Oishi's group attacking the front, and Oishi's son leading the attack in the rear. Bowmen were posted to shoot anyone fleeing the castle. Kira's men were taken by surprise but resisted fiercely. Many were killed and Kira was found hiding in a secret area of the castle. When he was captured, Oishi knelt and requested that Kira honorably kill himself. Kira was old and trembled and did not speak. Oishi eventually had Kira held and he cut off Kira's head with the knife his lord Asano had used to commit suicide. The Ronin marched 10 kilometers or so across the city to Asano's tomb with crowds who had heard of the attack congratulating them and offering refreshments. The Ronin, 46 of them since one was sent away as a messenger, placed Kira's head on Asano's temple tomb. They gave the temple monks all their money for their own proper burials. They were arrested and separated into four groups. Officials were not sure what to do. Their act was praised by many for their loyalty to their lord, but they had committed a crime by ignoring the shogun's order that no revenge would be taken for Asano's death. Finally, they decided to let the ronin commit suicide rather than be executed as criminals. They did so, but the 47th ronin was pardoned, possibly for his young age, and lived to about the age of 87. The youngest ronin to kill himself was Oichi's son, who was 15 years old on the attack and 16 when he killed himself. The ronin were buried with their master and their clothes and arms are still preserved in the temple. The Asano name was restored and some of their lands returned to the family. Legend says the samurai who spat on Oishi went to the ronin grave for forgiveness and killed himself there for his shame. In addition, the famous author of the Book of the Samurai criticized the Ronin, saying they should have attacked Kira immediately and not waited. If Kira had died during their planning, the Ronin would have had nothing to show for it and the shame would continue. He said Samurai should not care about victory or defeat, but should put honor above all else. Even dying in a useless attack would have brought immediate honor back to Asano, he said. However, the Ronin's ceaseless loyalty to their lord is considered by many Japanese a virtue nonetheless.